G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, market cap has rebounded pretty good and basically everything uh, is looking pretty good at the moment. That's generally what happens after a big dip. And again, this just keeps getting higher. So now we are, you know, that 2.5 trillion dollar mark, you know, sort of heading towards 3 trillion and, you know, some people predicting we get as high as 12 trillion and other people saying we're probably only going to get to about 5 trillion. So look, I don't know where we're going to go. That's the honest truth. It's dependent on so many things, you know, markets all around the world and what happens with, you know, the pandemic and all sorts of stuff. I, I have no idea, but my, you know, sort of rough guess is I think, yeah, maybe five trillion, you know, we can double maybe even a little bit more from here. But again, I generally really underestimate stuff. So, you know, keep that in mind. All right, moving on. Bitcoin dominance now under 42%. I mean, getting right down to 40, you know, 41.5. Soon we're going to go under that 40% mark unless Bitcoin wakes up and just goes on a big move. And then again, you're going to see a lot of these uh, altcoins uh, get knocked around a little bit. But again, that doesn't mean it's over for them generally. And again, I can't offer you financial advice. If you just hold long enough, they'll probably go into profit at some stage and they'll do uh, generally extremely well if they're a good project and there's some hype behind them and that. If they're a crap project and no hype, then they're not going to do that well. Generally, things, you know, well entrenched in the top 100 uh, are your best bet and really, you know, even the top 50 and, you know, the top 10. But in saying that, it doesn't mean I'm invested in everything in the top 10. It's just, you know, it's your decision about you what you want to invest in. Let's move on. All right, ETH dominance, oof, nearly 19%. And I mean, gas prices, again, the Berlin hard fork, that was good for nothing in the end. It was just, yeah, 246. Nobody outside of the very rich can use Ethereum at the moment. You know, it's 60 $70, something like that for just a basic sort of transaction. Way too expensive. Anyway, I don't want to harp on that. I've harped on that many a time. All right, like I said, I mean, it looks pretty green at the moment. It's looking pretty nice. I mean, Bitcoin Cash, 15%. I don't know why, but, you know, congratulations to those holding Bitcoin Cash. All right, let's have a look, though. What's really pumped in the last 24 hours? What's done really well? All right, EOS. We've got a story coming about EOS, and we've got a story coming about Yearn Finance. Uh, they have done really well. I mean, nearly doubled what they were worth in a very short amount of time. So, uh, congratulations. Gate token, never heard of it, but it's pumped really hard. Polygon, nice, back over a dollar again. Booyah, a dollar eleven. I really am thinking Polygon can probably go to three or five dollars before the end of this uh, cycle. You know, absolutely, my best performer now. I think it has finally uh, taken that mark now that it's got over a dollar. I'd have to go back and have a look. Some of my synthetics networks done pretty well. Uh, v chain's done pretty well as well but i think polygon might now uh, reign supreme so congratulations to everyone holding polygon sushi swap i mean look these are all you know basically 20 percent sort of gains i mean even down here we're still getting into 15 percent gains i mean synthetics network token 14.6 it got down to like 16 dollars something and i bought some but I think I bought it more around the $17 range, so I haven't been able to take full advantage of that 15% gain. But yeah, I bought Synthetics, I bought VeChain, and I bought the graph yesterday. So that was what I uh, put some money into on the dip. But, you know, we're not out of the woods yet. And when we have a look at the charts, you'll see what I mean. But again, look, things doing really well. Aave again, up 13%. But we've got to remember, most of these dumped by almost that much the other day as well. Not all of them, not quite. But definitely some of them did. All right, what hasn't done so well in the last 24 hours? Is there anything that's, excuse me, uh, got knocked around a little bit? Telecoin, and after that, pretty much nothing. Again, you're looking at all the stable coins and they've hardly moved. So we've got, you know, Pirate Chain. <laughs> oh, God, Pirate Chain. But anyway, Telecoin uh, got knocked around a little bit. But, I mean, look, it's still up nearly 200% over the last seven days. So again, I wouldn't be too worried about losing 12% if I'm up 200%. The only issue is if you bought at the very top and you're down 12%. But again, generally, and this is investing across the board, as long as you're in something good, if you hold for long enough, it'll go into profit. That's the way investing works, but it has to be a good project. You know, again, there's got to be hype behind it. They've got to have a good marketing team. You can have the best product in the world, and if no one knows about it, no one's going to buy it. So that's the other thing that you need to remember, you know, that kind of hype thing. And, you know, I personally think Dogecoin is 
a, a perfect example of a really hypey coin and hopefully someday it turns into something more than just hype if it continues to get bigger but that's really all it is there's not a lot of development going on uh, in that and again I've spoken about that before so all right the market cap looking good and again staying over that two trillion dollar mark which is good and hitting 2.5 trillion and again for me yeah, I think we're going to sort of three to five trillion, but you know, there's people out there saying anywhere from 10 to 12 trillion at the peak of this cycle. So very interesting. All right, Bitcoin chart, let's have a look. So as we can see, still just sort of traveling sideways. We have been sort of in a range. I mean, we can sort of really say sort of around about back here. So since the 8th of Feb, so that is a couple of months now. Bitcoin, generally when it ranges like this for that kind of time, ends up doing something really big and I think it'll probably be to the upside considering but just need to consider it might be the downside again I still think this is where uh, you're going to find a really good buying point but that's not to say it can't go lower but again the 50 day moving average I mean it's just stuck on the 50 day moving average it'll go a little bit over it and then it'll go a little bit under it but it's really just clinging on to that 50 day moving average so obviously the buying pressure and selling pressure are very even at the moment and at some stage one of them's gonna have to give. Which one it's going to be? Yeah, I don't know. I can't tell you which one that's gonna be. But I think the selling pressure will probably be the one that'll crack and the buying pressure will overtake. All right, moving on, heaps of really good stories. Coinbase overtakes TikTok for the number one position on the Apple Store. So again, that's telling you where crypto is going right now and why the market cap is still growing. It's the number one app, I mean, you know, Kids, they love those apps. And it's not like adults don't like any apps, but I mean, it's usually those, yeah, again, kind of hypey, you know, apps that, you know, do really, really well. The latest game, you know, the latest, you know, whatever it is. And TikTok is kind of one of those things. Coinbase, the biggest, has overtaken it. So that means even extremely young generations uh, are getting into it. And I'm not saying, you know, anyone under 18 should have this kind of app or anything like that, but I would not be surprised if there isn't kids uh, with those apps and they'll probably use their parents' details or something to open one. Or I haven't actually used a Coinbase app. I'm sure you probably have to be 18 or over, but maybe you don't. But it says here, according to the top chart list on the Apple App Store, Coinbase is currently the most popular app in the United States, ahead of TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and the trading app Robinhood. Cash App, which allows users to send money and buy Bitcoin, sits in the number 12 position at the time of publication, while Binance and, Tr and Trust's apps are 16 and 17, respectively. So there we go. It was just the US. I thought it might have been worldwide. I mean, yeah, it'd be interesting to see what is worldwide, but Coinbase... This crypto space, it just continues to grow. You know, for anyone who's new to this space, uh, there's, you know, lots of upside, but please be aware of, you know, cycles and particularly the four year cycle, because we're sort of closer to the end of the four year cycle of this bull market, let's say, sorry, than we are to uh, the start of it. So, yeah, understand investing principles. And if you're in it for the long term and in a good project, you know, if you hold long enough, you're most likely going to do well. But if you panic sell and sell at a loss, then uh, you're not ready for investing. All right, balance of protocol. So automated market makers or AMMs have been a staple of the rapidly growing DeFi industry. And I think we're going to have a, a DeFi 2021 summer like we did sort of last year in 2020. And I think prices are going to go mad. That's just my personal opinion though. Balancer, a leading automated market maker, has launched version two of its protocol, promising faster speed, lower costs, and improved liquidity. In addition to revamping the user interface, Balancer's back end will provide more efficient routing for trades through Protocol Vault. The platform claims that this upgrade will reduce gas costs and produce better pricing mechanisms. So uh, I'm not invested in Balancer. Again, it's you know one of those things that you can't buy them all. Uh, it's done pretty well though, particularly since when I was looking at it. So anyone who's in Balancer, you know, version two, you know, cheaper gas fees and all the rest of it. Again, you know, these are all really, really bullish things and are unlikely to be things that are going to create a downturn in the market. You know, if things like this weren't able to be done, that might create a downturn. You know, news comes out now that we weren't able to do it. The product's not ready. It's going to take another year or two. That puts people off. But all these things being rolled out just says uh, the bull market likely has further to go. All right, Yearn Finance. 
I never got into Yearn Finance, and look, I am kicking myself a little bit, especially as it went up 45%, and it's now worth, I think, about $87,000, so it's worth more than Bitcoin. They've lost me. They've lost me. This this worries me. Yearn Finance is up nearly 45% in 24 hours, and it appears to be thanks to the team's new dog token offering, a bi-directional peg to Wi-Fi. This smells like uh, disaster. That's literally what it smells like. Despite Dogecoin retracing from its all-time high above 70 cents, dog tokens continue to attract astonishing levels of popularity, with DeFi blue chip Yearn Finance emerging as arguably the most prominent team seeking to cash in on the canine meme coin. And this is what we need to remember. It's a meme coin craze with the launch of its Woofy token. I mean, this is just a cash grab and, you know... <sighs> Again, I see these coins, and again, I hope I'm wrong about Dogecoin considering how many people have got into it. And I accept that if I'm wrong uh, and I've missed out on crazy gains, I, I can live with that. But I just, you know, I like to invest based on fundamentals, and Dogecoin's fundamentals haven't changed, which is why I can't just kind of, yeah, rush into it. If I suddenly find out a whole stack of stuff's being built on it, uh, you know, developers and all that, different story. Then I'll admit defeat, sort of, and go, right, yeah, I'm buying Dogecoin. But I've heard nothing of the like, and that's why I'm staying away from it. And now, you know, Yearn Finance, this is just a grab. What is the woofy token going to do legitimately? Yep, Yearn Finance, uh, I won't be touching that with a 10-foot pole because of this. Moving on, Engine, one of my favorite projects. Uh, and again, the whole NFT space, I, I think it has a long way to go and will become extremely big. It's just the NFTs themselves. Like I said, I don't know enough about them, so I invest in the platforms around them. So a new NFT marketplace plans to make tokenized art and media real, putting it onto things like t-shirts and hats and even 3D printing them. I like this. I like this a lot. An ecosystem that allows non-fungible tokens to be backed by physical items has entered into partnership with Engine. I think this is going to be big. Number one, you'll have the digital thing and then you'll have a physical thing to show it. And look, the physical thing can easily be reproduced and you know it'll be hard to know whether it's the legit one but you know as long as you still own the digital one then it doesn't really matter the digital one will be it but it'll be nice to have something physical that you can hold and show people and things like that so i think this is going to be massive and i think engines uh, coin is going to pump even higher again because of this now uniquely describes itself as a bridge between virtual non-fungible tokens and real world goods and aims to solve one of the last hurdles that the nft uh, sector faces the nfts on offer from uniquely can be redeemed for something tangible meaning the digital assets can be materialized and turned into something you can see and touch. And that's what lots of people will want. It's great to look at something that looks pretty on a screen, but you know something you can touch and use, I think that is going to be massive as well. And again, you can have a whole stack of you know, imitation uh, 3D versions, you know, hats and t-shirts and all that whatnot. But as long as you've still got the digital uh, one, which, you know, is going to be on the blockchain, you'll know you've got the real one. And who cares if people have got all these kind of fake looking ones? They won't be able to sell it as the real one because you will be the holder of that digital uh, piece on the blockchain. So I think this is going to be bigger. I was always thinking about stuff like this. I was like, yeah, you know, these pretty pictures and all the rest of it and this code that you're going to have, that's great. But a lot of people still want to be able to touch stuff as well. And so, again, you know, you, I use this as an example because I'm a bit of a comic book nerd uh, at times. You know, like Venom, one of my favorite characters. Uh, and I'd love to have some, you know, non-fungible token, you know, with Venom. I, I looked at some and they were a little bit expensive. But I also I thought, you know, I'd want something real, like some kind of statue type thing, action figure type thing that, you know, you can sit there and, you know, look at and all the rest of it. And this is where I see that going. I think this is going to be massive. I think, you know, in the future when you buy toys from Kmart and Toys R Us and things like that, you're going to get a... They're going to have a non-fungible token with them. Again, it could be one of 100, one of 1,000 or, you know, whatever. And it's also going to be a way for you to know that you've got the real thing uh, and not some dodgy knockoff. I definitely see that uh, gaining massive space in the future. All right, Mark Cuban. 
So he's joined Ethereum's NFT game Axe Infinity with a $7.5 million raise. So Axie Infinity's been uh, growing quite fast. It's a, a game that a lot of people are, are into. The NFT-driven monster battling game has surged of late, and it now has funding and celebrities investors. So, sorry, funding and celebrity investors to give it an even bigger push. So Mark Cuban's got in. They've raised a whole stack of money. Other celebrities getting on board. I mean, crypto, the whole space is just yeah primed to really go off. And the scary thing is. We've had some unbelievable gains over the last year. I, I, I shudder to think where it might be uh, in another year's time. Again, I've got no doubt there's going to be some kind of bear market. I just I don't think we're going to have those 85% uh, losses, 75% losses. In some of the altcoins that just, you know, they really are, there's nothing behind them. I think, you know, they can definitely lose a whole lot. But good projects that are, you know, are fundamentally good, I think, you know, they'll probably still see 50, 60, maybe 70%. I think Bitcoin, uh, yeah, I don't know where it's going to go. It'll really depend on how high it goes. I mean, if Bitcoin gets to 400,000, then I think it'll definitely have a, more than a 50% correction. Uh, but yeah, the days of 85 to 90 something percent corrections for Bitcoin and possibly even Ethereum, yeah, I'm not sure. I think they might be, uh, in, you know, the days of past, as they say. Right, moving on. So, CryptoPunks. Another one has been sold, this time at the uh, Chinese, uh, so the Asian Christie's, I think is what they said. So, CryptoPunk NFT sells for $16.9 million at Christie's auction. It's the first big NFT sale at Christie's since the $69 million Beeple sale in March. Whew! $16.9 million. Uh, no, it was Christie's in New York. I must be thinking of another uh, story that I was reading. But there, $16.9 million, You know, people are paying for these, you know, digital art kind of things. And again, they are they are a moment in history of when the blockchain sort of really became real. And, you know, the, you know these techie, nerdy guys that would have been laughed at once upon a time are now all of a sudden, you know, bringing in change that the world will probably remember for such a very long time. And, you know you know, web 3.0 and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I would never have $16.9 million to spend on an NFT, but I suppose, you know, if I had hundreds of millions or something like that, yeah, you know, again, a, a piece of history that, you know, is quantifiable that you can prove that it's yours and no one can, you know, imitate it because it's there on the blockchain forever. Hey, if you've got the money, why not? And again, these things could be worth mega bucks in the future. But my personal opinion, like I've said, is most NFTs, they're not going to be worth much in the future. They're, they're going to be a, a sentimental kind of thing, like collecting basketball cards and that. One or two here and there will be worth an absolute mint, and the rest, yeah, they won't be worth much at all. EOS, so like I said, we're talking about EOS. <sighs> Up 46% as Block One invests $10 billion into the exchange. So Block One, the software firm behind EO, EOS IO blockchain platform, has pulled together ten billion to get bullish global off the ground. So Block One supplied one hundred sixty four thousand Bitcoin to get this uh, exchange off the ground. Twenty million EOS tokens, two hundred fifty million, and a hundred million in cash, while also raising three hundred million in strategic funding. So that's why the EOS token uh, has done so well. Uh, yeah, again, Dan Larimer, you know, was part of this and then he left it and everyone thought it was dead, but it's hanging on and it seems like, you know, people are still planning to build on it and all the rest of it. So congratulations to those who held on. EOS enjoyed the best day of any of the top 100 cryptocurrencies by market cap, moving from $9.17 to $13.84 in just six hours this morning after the news broke. Now, the 46% boost yesterday uh, beat out other hot assets such as Wi-Fi and, again, Matic doing extremely well. Uh, I'm loving that I held on to Matic. Oh, I was so close to selling it a few times and I just held and, you know, it's paid off for me. So I'm really glad about that. All right, boxing legend Floyd Mayweather bringing out uh, NFTs. So, again, the NFT space just continues to grow. You know, he's getting set up to have his fight with uh, Jake Paul or Logan Paul. I forget which one he's going to fight. Uh, Logan Paul, there it is down there. And, you know, he's jumping on the crypto bandwagon. 
Now, look, he was involved in crypto a while ago. Him, DJ Khaled, and a few other people uh, were ambassadors for this crypto uh, that you know basically went belly up and was a full-on scam. So I'm not saying his NFTs are a scam, but you know, I don't think he knows a whole lot about blockchain in all fairness. But he has seen that there's plenty of money to be made because, I mean, Jake Paul and Logan Paul have made plenty of money from non-fungible tokens of late, uh, you know, through their YouTube channel and all the rest of it. And, you know, Floyd Mayweather has seen that. You know, Tom Brady's coming out with his own collection as well. All these sports stars are seeing that and they're going to all do exactly the same. And last but not least, sticking with NFTs, they're huge. eBay will now allow the sale of NFTs on its platform. So e-commerce giant eBay has become the first in its industry to catch the non-fungible tokens or NFT mania as the company is now allowing the sales of NFTs on its platform. The ability to list and sell NFTs would be open to only the whitelisted sellers. So this could mean that the platform may have an authentication protocol for listing NFTs. I hope that is what they do because, you know, there's already lots, not lots, but there's fake stuff sold on eBay anyway. So for NFTs and that, yes, I hope they have something like that that will ensure that, you know, when you're on there, you know you're buying the legit NFT and it's not someone just... Yeah, selling some fake crap and ripping people off. And unfortunately, it's not just eBay. You know, there's plenty of other places where you buy stuff online that, you know, have dodgy knockoff stuff. And the last thing you want to do is spend, you know, a good amount of money to find out the NFT that you bought is fake and it's not even on the blockchain and all the rest of it. All right, well, that's it for me. I mean, I'd love to know your thoughts down below. Are you into the NFT space? Again, whether it's like me investing in Engine or maybe Wax or Chili's or things like that. Or have you actually bought NFTs yourself? And if so, what did you buy? I'd love to know. And how has it performed? Is it worth more now or less? All right, well, that's it from me. Things are looking pretty bullish at the moment. But again, you know, we just got to wait and see. As long as Bitcoin travels sideways, things will do well. Uh, if it goes on a run, things will still do, you know, okay. They'll be dragged up with it. But if Bitcoin rolls over and has a dip, we're going to get punished. That's generally the way it works. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on that game train at the moment. Most of us should. It didn't, like, didn't look like there was much down at all. And I'll see you next time.